so you've decided to go live on YouTube. Congratulations, you've made the right choice. It's better for discovery, has better tech behind the streams, and as a platform, it will support you in making the best content you can. Today, you're gonna learn how to unlock YouTube streaming. It's easy. How to connect Streamlabs or OBS to YouTube. It's easy. How to schedule a stream. It's easy. How to go live. It's easy. And as an added bonus, at the end of this video, I will share with you three things every new YouTube streamer needs to know about the platform to get the most out of it. And of course, how I grew from zero to 100 average viewers and how you can too. So let's get into it. There is a weird rumor or myth that to go live, you need to have thousands of subs and be partnered. But this isn't true. To unlock live streaming, you just need to have zero live strikes in 90 days and to verify your channel. What does that mean? Well, you'll be asked for a phone number and you'll be sent a text message with a code. And once you verify with that, you can not just go live, but you can also add custom thumbnails, upload videos longer than 15 minutes and manage copyright claims. You might have to wait between 24 to 48 hours, depending on your country before you can actually go live after verifying, but that's okay because for now you have way more work to do. Since we're using OBS or Streamlabs today, then that means you'll be able to use overlays, alerts, and generally add lots to your stream. The issue is if I showed you how to do all of that today, this video would become far too long and confusing. So instead you'll find linked in the description, a video for Streamlabs, overlays, alerts, and more, and another for doing all of that inside OBS. So next up, you're gonna need to log in to YouTube with OBS or Streamlabs. Next, you're gonna head over to OBS or Streamlabs and connect your YouTube account. It is incredibly easy. I'll be showing you how in OBS, but Streamlabs is the same. Open OBS, go to settings, click stream, click service, and select YouTube in the dropdown. Now click connect account, and from here you'll log into the YouTube account and channel that you're going to be streaming from. Once it's connected, you are all set to go live. So let's schedule a stream. You see, scheduling is important because you'll want your subscribers to actually know when you're going live. And in the lead up to the stream, they can actually click notify me on it so they get a ping when you go live. If you don't do this, you might be going live to zero viewers, which is fine because we all have to do that at some point, but I still think scheduling will help avoid that. So head to YouTube Studio, look in the top right, click create, and you should see go live. If you verified properly, that is. Click this and it opens the live control room. Click the manage tab and click schedule stream. Now for me, I can reuse old settings from previous streams, which is great. But for you, you'll likely need to create a new stream and set this up for yourself. Here you'll set a title and a thumbnail, which is a really important step for you because this will make or break whether a viewer chooses to click on your stream over someone else's stream, video, or YouTube short. For more on how to make those clickable, stick around because I'll cover it a little bit later. But otherwise, you'll also select your game category, playlists. If you're a partner, you can set monetization here and then you can customize the stream further. For example, you can change who can chat in your stream, whether you want emoji reacts, your delay. You can set a trailer so anyone who drops by before the stream starts gets a preview for the stream that you've edited and uploaded beforehand. And of course, redirects, which essentially lets you go live. And when you end your stream, all your viewers are redirected to another live stream or video premiere that you've set up here. Also, you can set your visibility here if you want. If you want to go live to test your settings or stream just by yourself, then set the visibility to unlisted or private. If you're scheduling a public stream, then select public and then select the time the stream is scheduled for. Once you're happy, click done, but keep this open for now because we'll need it again in a second. When it's time to start your stream, you'll open OBS and your live control panel. Then inside OBS, click manage broadcast, select existing broadcast and select the one we just set up. Make sure you click select broadcast so that you don't accidentally make a whole new stream and confuse your viewers. And now OBS has connected directly to that stream you scheduled and it is ready for you to go live. Once you're ready, click start streaming and you're not actually live yet. Inside your live control room, wait for the stream preview to show up. And once you're actually ready for your viewers to see you, click go live. Congratulations, you're now streaming. I will say just really quickly, sometimes the stream preview doesn't show up, but I still click go live and it works perfectly fine for me. It just sometimes doesn't, doesn't appear first. Once you're done and want to end your stream, click end stream. And then inside OBS, also click end stream. If your stream was under 12 hours, it'll automatically be archived to your YouTube channel under the stream tab. And also you can find old, current or upcoming streams in the live tab on your YouTube studio dashboard. Now, real quick, I'm going to show you how I grew my YouTube stream on a new channel, not this one. But first, there are three ways YouTube is different from every other streaming platform. It's a good different, but if you don't understand these three things, well, it very quickly becomes a bad different. The first is that, well, YouTube feels far stricter on copyright, but I promise you they're not. They're just following it properly and giving creators appropriate warnings. You see other platforms, you can get away with breaking copyright because their systems aren't very good at detecting it. Well, that's what people think. It's actually that the systems just aren't very good at warning you when they do detect it. You see, on YouTube, they'll notify you when something is copyrighted material and ask you to change this or turn it off. Whereas on Twitch, you'll just be muted, claimed or striked after the stream. 
This could be days, weeks, months, and you don't get any control. It just happens. The big difference between platforms is really that YouTube has built in tools and features that creators need. And I'll explain the major one that it has nobody else does in a second. But first, look, on YouTube, you need to make sure you're following copyright properly. This means no copyrighted music mainly. And that might sound stressful, but I promise you it's actually not that hard to find good music, especially with today's sponsor, Epidemic Sound. Epidemic have over 40,000 songs and 90,000 sound effects, and they all fall under the same license. I've been using Epidemic since day one of this channel and my Twitch channel, which was before we ever partnered with them. Check it out. Maybe you're going up against a massive boss, or you're finally about to beat the challenge that you've set up for weeks on your stream. Throw on I Am Unbreakable and watch the chat go wild. Or maybe you just want to relax, chat to chat, and play some Animal Crossing. Well, grab any of their lo-fi tracks like Airbed by Osoku or their multi-hour long lo-fi mixes and just sit back and relax. Right now for free, using the link in the description, you can get a 30-day free trial, which the best part, any content you publish using Epidemic in those 30 days stays completely monetized and saved forever, even if you choose not to continue with it. Because Epidemic owns all of their music, so there's no chance your videos or live streams will ever receive a claim or take down even in the future. Now look, what is it that YouTube has that nobody else does. Well, YouTube is hard, but it's fair. Other platforms are hard, but unfair. On other streaming platforms, you're competing with other streamers. That's it. You're all just slapping a title on, being ranked by view count high to low, and doing your best. This makes streaming more casual and less content focused, which is fine, not a problem at all. But it also comes with the major issue that tiny creators very rarely get seen. On YouTube, you're competing against videos, shorts, streams, all of it. This is brutal. But because it uses an algorithm, it means the best content for a viewer rises to the top. To do this, you're going to want to make sure your YouTube streams are more unique. This means crafting titles and thumbnails that are more than just playing X game today, click here. And instead something like, I have one hour to beat this game or I give away a thousand dollars. And yes, that sounds extreme, but the idea is taking something basic anyone can do and adding a unique, interesting approach that makes someone feel like they need to click. If you want to get clicks and learn more about this, wait one second, it's coming up in a moment. And number three, remember your streams are archived as videos forever. This is incredibly important because it means you can get clicks after the stream ends and continue to grow while you're offline or even asleep. But also this means if something happens you don't want on the internet forever, you need to remember to delete it after the stream. And now if you want to learn about how to grow from zero to 100 viewers on YouTube streams, then click this video right here. It's the six steps I took to do just that. And they're very easy to follow if you jump into it now. See you guys next week.